What's going on everybody? For today's keyboard lighting video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make an animated Pokeball that will appear to be flying through the air and adding some animation to it as well. As always, there will be a download link in the description below, but if you wanna find out how to take your Razer keyboard lighting to the next level, then you're gonna to wanna to stick around and watch this video. Please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, and if you're new, hit that subscribe button. I promise if you stick around, this channel is going to teach you something. Let's get right into this keyboard lighting design. This is Pokeball. All right guys, for this keyboard lighting design, I'm gonna focus more on how to add the animation over how to actually make this design specifically. And hopefully it helps you guys learn more about how to create animation with your designs. So if you're trying to animate your keyboard lighting and you're working in frame by frame basis, you're always gonna wanna have your angle at zero degrees or at 180 degrees, straight up or straight down. I'm gonna work with a speed of four just to slow my design down a little bit. And now I'm gonna explain how you use your timeline. So if you select a key on the keyboard and you change your angle to zero, you can now click on your color drop down, this gradient bar here, and you can select any one of these presets in here. And now it shows you some nodes and you have this bar. So what you need to know about animation in your keyboard lighting is that the farther right on the bar you are, the sooner it's going to play in your timeline. So this is the beginning of your timeline. Over here on the left, this is the end of your timeline. So if I make a red node on the right side here, and I make this next node to it invisible, I can delete out these other nodes. And now for this key, and when my timeline starts, that key's gonna flash red for just a brief second and then it's going to keep going down my timeline. So it's gonna flash red and then keep going. I want it to flash for a little bit longer than that, so I'm actually going to add another red node right next to it. Okay, so we have this key flashing red, and in my next sequence of, of events, I want my Pokeball to start to get larger, and I want it to appear as it's moving off to the left. So I'm actually gonna copy the same exact effect that I put on this key, and I'm gonna go to where I want my next part of the animation to be, which is these two keys. I'm gonna have it move left and start to get larger, and I'm gonna paste what I put in there. Then I'm gonna click off here into the gray and then reselect these keys. And now I want these keys to brighten up after my first key. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use these previous nodes as uh, placements. So as soon as this red one's done, I want it to go into red on this key. So if I make this node right here red, add another red node, so I have my two key red width, and then add one more and make this new node invisible. And we can come back and delete our first one and make the second one invisible. So now as soon as my first key gets done lighting red, right after it, my next set of keys is going to light up red as well. So now I know you're looking at these two keys thinking, why isn't this lighting up red with that? The reason is, is because we do have a vertical wave and if they're the exact same effect, they're going to be in sync with each other, so they're going to use the same wave pattern. What you have to do to break that up is technically change the color of the wave. So let me show you what I mean. If you go into one of these two, because they're currently sharing the same exact effect, if you click on there and you click on one of the reds, you can see there's a hex code. If you change the very last digit by one value, it's going to technically change the effect, but visually it's going to be almost exactly the same. So if you do that, they're going to be set on their own timer. As you can see, now they light up at the exact same time because they're not sharing the wave effect. They, have, they each have their own. So I've switched back to my Pokeball keyboard lighting, and I'm going to try and talk it through and explain how it works. 
So here you can see I've added a wave layer. This is my first initial wave layer. And if you click on this key, you can see in the very beginning of my timeline, I have a small red color there. And you can see as it steps over to this next set of keys, it goes red and white here. So for this next step, you can see as I change from this key to this key, it goes farther down my timeline. And when it steps to the, that next portion of my timeline, I have this one flashing red and this one flashing white. So here I have a little bit of white in there. Now if I go to my next step over here where it gets larger with four, you can see I kind of added the effect where the ball was spinning. So I alternate it as it moves. I have red on the top, white on the bottom. As soon as I go to my next step, I have red on the bottom, white on the top. You can see it's kind of flipping through the air. And as I move to this next portion of my keyboard lighting, you can see how it slowly steps down my timeline, creating that animation effect. Once again, stepping from this one to the next one, you can see it, it just continues to go down my timeline. And then all I'm doing for each portion of these timelines is I'll slide it down a little bit, I'll copy that, effect and then I'll paste it in all of these keys where this ball is so this is the exact same effect that's on all of these keys right here except for I'm just changing the color so if it's if I want white there I'll change the color to white if I want red there I'll change the color to red also in each of these steps if if I have red on multiple rows, so this row and this row, they're technically different by changing the color code. You can see here I have um, FF0000. Here on this next row, you can see I have FF0001. But you can use your timeline to create animated effects just like I created this Pokeball. Also, if in your animation you're going to continue using the same key, so you can see from right here, from this small seven key ball, I went up to another one that was big and used the same spot. What you have to do is copy this effect, create a new layer, and paste your effect in there, and step, step down your timeline from there. So if you're going to overwrite or go over the top of an existing layer, make sure you make a new layer, paste your effect in there, and then continue to step down your timeline. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something about Razer Synapse and how you can take your keyboard lighting to the next level. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. That way you guys see upcoming keyboard lighting videos. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I always post teasers of upcoming keyboard lighting videos. So make sure you go and check those out. If you guys ever have any questions or you guys wanna just chat a little bit, I do go live every once in a while on Twitch. You can find me at twitch.tv forward slash unreal hero underscore. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys in the next video.